Hi, everyone. I just wanted to welcome you to MGH Charlestown Pandemic Winter Survival Guide. It's been quite the year, and we still have to get through a tough winter. And as a matter of fact, I'm just getting over COVID, and we need to really be careful to avoid getting this because I have been sick for one month, and I'm just starting to feel better. So I'm going to help you get through this winter pandemic, and we're just going to get through this together because remember, we're all in this together, but we do need some basic planning involved. So let's start out by discussing the fact that we need a select small group of people to be around, and we need to limit our physical contact this winter to just this small group of friends or family. And avoid close contact with anyone outside that group. It's going to be hard, but we can do it. Have a plan to take care of your mental health. Because this next three months could be the worst time in our epidemic. So please plan accordingly and be smart about it. Make sure you take the steps to protect your mental health. And be prepared by knowing a mental health specialist and how to reach them if you need them. You should also be able to contact family members or friends for support because your therapist isn't always going to be available. So really um, work on that social support system. Be very cautious, even with outdoor socializing. Try to keep your gatherings outside. You can always use a fire pit, heat lamp, and dress warmly. But know that socializing outside is safer, but not always safe. If you're st still sitting a foot away from each other, without a mask, you can still spread it. So, And also remember that just because someone is close family or a close friend doesn't mean they're safe, especially if they've been out having many contacts. If you visit family or friends, please be smart. So if you really need to travel for the holiday season, please cut out any risky behavior before your trip, such as eating um, indoors at a restaurant or um, going to an indoor mall, getting in close contact with people who you don't live with. It's also a good idea to get tested before seeing loved ones so those who test positive can stay home. You want to make sure you don't get a false sense of security just because you have a negative test result. Sometimes there are false negatives, which means you have the disease, but the test doesn't detect it. Celebrate the holidays safely. You can celebrate by having a virtual dinner with family or friends. You can also share a favorite holiday recipe. That would be nice to carry on some tradition. You can also help people at high risk for COVID-19 or those who are feeling isolated by preparing holiday dishes and delivering them in a way that doesn't involve contact with others. That would make you feel better and that will of course make them feel better. Please keep things in perspective. This winter will be tough, but this is short term. Remember all the people that COVID-19 has killed and many survivors still have complications after infection. Months later, patients still have breathing difficulty and extreme fatigue. So remember the long-term benefits of making short-term changes. Think of the consequences for older people that we really wish to see. It's not worth the risk of exposing them. So as we're dealing with this difficult pandemic, we're also dealing with seasonal depression up in the north, northern hemisphere, hemisphere. So seasonal affective disorder, which is otherwise known as SAD, is a type of depression that comes and goes with the seasons. Typically starts in the late fall and early winter and goes away during the summer. One main factor of SAD is disruptions to your biological clock.
the reduced levels of sunlight in fall and winter may cause this seasonal depression. This decrease in sunlight may disrupt your body's internal clock and lead to feelings of sadness. The second main factor of sad is reduced serotonin levels. A drop in serotonin, which is a brain chemical neurotransmitter that affects mood, might play a role in sad. Reduced sunlight can cause a drop in serotonin that may trigger depression. The third main factor of SAD is melatonin levels. Melatonin is a hormone that responds to darkness and plays a role in sleep patterns. The change in season can disrupt the balance of the body's level of melatonin, which affects your sleep and mood. Signs of seasonal depression. Examples of mild cases of feeling tired and eating lots of comfort foods. Some people experience reduced energy, low motivation, or you may just find yourself more lethargic without really understanding why you're feeling this way. Other more severe symptoms include sadness, isolation, and not taking care of yourself, such as changing clothes or showering. Try the following things to help you through this tough time. So let's talk about a treatment plan that you can try to work on yourself. It's important to get support. You may need to talk to a therapist or just someone reliable. And you want to try to focus on regulating your emotions through mindfulness-based exercises. What I mean by this is being present and in the moment. Try not to worry about the past and the future problems and balance physical symptoms through movement, breathing exercises, and meditation. Monitor your sleep and nutritional patterns and social support system. Try to notice if you need improvement in an area and work on change for the better. Some of the treatments available for SAD include talk therapy with a therapist. Talk therapy helps people identify issues that cause emotional distress. Other people like me use a specialized light therapy box, which will emit bright light mimicking sunlight without the harmful UV rays. The box gives off bright light that mimics natural outdoor light. Light therapy is thought to affect brain chemicals linked to mood and sleep, easing sad symptoms. Using a light therapy box may also help with other types of depression, sleep disorders, and other conditions. Set a schedule. Set a time and create a series of activities to start and end your day. Days and months can bleed together without structure. Exercise. Regular exercise can be an effective way to relieve some forms of depression and is often a neglected strategy in the management of depression. Numerous studies have shown that people who exercise regularly experience fewer symptoms of depression and anxiety than those who do not exercise regularly. Take my virtual exercise classes. If your schedule doesn't work with the class schedule, take my classes at your leisure on YouTube. Please try to have fun. Reconnect with, with the things that you enjoy, whether it means going for a walk or jumping rope or playing games virtually or, or with someone you live with, stay connected. Have family time, virtual gatherings, good conversations, and playing a game is helpful. We tend to isolate when we're depressed, and that is counterproductive to feeling better. Having close and supportive relationships can be an invaluable lifeline when someone is struggling with depression and sad symptoms. A virtual support group is also helpful and beneficial because it cuts down the isolation. 2021 is going to be a much better year. Let's get through this winter pandemic and let's get through it safely. Stay strong, stay healthy.